This one works.
to move like a move though. What's wrong with it? Maybe I didn't set that one up. Oh man, I can't believe that one is Got it. Okay. Got some, uh, We got a terrible tea today. It's not terrible, I like it, but as far as uh, morality goes, I'm sure it's not the best. $13 for a pound, can't be good. Garage is so cold. It's, he is almost cold. Anyway, this is what we're drinking. <clears throat> I suppose it's not very good tea, but it's uh, the lychee flavor is so damn tasty. I love lychee. The lychee. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, anyway, today we're going to work. We're going to finish off this coffee filter holder. Get it looking nice. My girlfriend asked for me to put uh, some kind of uh, wood shape that's shaped like the filters that would like hold it to the front. So we'll work on something like that. Kind of like a divider and then we'll uh we'll flush up the sides maybe sand off the harsh corners and we'll decide on the finish i don't know if i'm gonna put a finish on it yet i want to do a few test pieces to see if you like it like that um but then we started this uh pencil box last time and we glued this up so we'll have to clean up what we messed up there and oh there's hair out like crazy um but we'll clean this one up make it fit and we'll finish this pencil box whether or not it's good we have three more dovetails to do on that and that's that's basically my third dovetail, so we're kind of just learning it, I'm trying to get better. We'd love to do more dovetails in the future. Mm. Anyway, I'm gonna set this tea aside somewhere. If it's visible still. Why not? I thought the cameras were put up. We'll pull that guy to that side. This would be our primary working station. Oh, yeah. 
still quite cold in this garage. Should get a jacket or something, but it's all right. So we start on this guy. We gotta find a way to maybe clamp him. Whatever, I'm not gonna assume it's gender. Legs aren't super fragile. I think there is a good way to clamp this. Let's Anyway. Alright, not sure if I can get to it. So then we're just gonna take my block plane. And I'm gonna test it, make sure it's for a really thin shaving. Across. It's sticking it up here. And keep going until it's really not in flush. Pretty flush, I'm gonna take some sandpaper on that one.
<clears throat> All right. off any of these <clears throat> just taking off the high edges where these joints those two pieces will really meet Thank you. 
Alright. The sandbag doesn't really take out all the scratches. And that's probably just because of the high grit that I use for my uh, belt sander. <clears throat> Some deep gouges in it. Let's sand this side a little more. Sand over some of these edges. Let's take the sharpness off.
the last aria. <laughs> yeah. Hope you got the blower ready. <laughs> Sometimes when there's a really big snowstorm, I do the snow blower once in like the middle of it, and then it makes the second one a little bit easier. right out of the blower. The only problem with that is when it is windy and it's really fluffy, it blows right back at you sometimes. <laughs> Almost like I've done it once or twice before. <laughs> yeah, dude, my crotch is really crotch. Crotchy. Crotchety. Gotta love the crotch. Crotch really. Yeah, we'll uh we'll get this all nice and sanded and all the corners rounded off properly and um finish up that dovetail box and we have finishing time for dinner. Yeah, I was watching another dovetail video this morning. There's a bunch of stuff that I kind of forgot about, so. Always good to refresh. Refresh and relearn and remember. Help her doing dovetails and palette wood, that's for sure. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, sometimes those little projects are like the most satisfying. They don't take quite as long. They just kind of they fit anywhere in the house. You don't have to like find a spot for them. It's just a lot to be said for some trinkety like this.
Ooh, glider speed. Yeah, you gotta do some smalls. Make your own crotch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now we have to stand the crotch. We're in crotch standing mode. <clears throat> Might have to label this not safe for work. Thank you. Almost got to open up a new bag. Sharks are a good breakfast. As, uh, as soon as it gets hairy, we gotta sand it back. <clears throat> heck, of a, heck of some razor burn, though. Really, really quite a bit of razor burn. Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm just, uh, I don't know, this is kind of the prototype of, uh, of what uh, I want to do. So we're just kind of getting a good handle on things. Yeah, I saw you were reorganizing your shop on, on the gram. That's awesome. That's like one of my favorite things to do is reorganize things. Planning out the future. Pretending I'm a actual woodworker. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's almost no shelving in here. So I have to like constantly reorganize, keep things open. And I built a shed this summer so I could get most of the, the junk out and free from this space. 
So now I can even, my girlfriend can even get her car in here. So I got that going for me, which is nice for her. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, uh, the summer before we sheetrocked and insulated the garage. Um, so I still have to finish all the sheetrock. So I want to keep as many shelves off of the walls as possible. So I can just, I can just pull everything back and do all the sheetrock. Hopefully this summer. Yeah, you wish you had a space for a ship. Oh, you don't have a place for the bikes and lawnmower. Yep, that's basically what mine is. Plus all the extra materials I have, like two by fours and two by eights. And kayaks, I have a couple of kayaks. Stores the snowblower in the summer. What else do I have in there? A couple pallets. All the junk. All the junk. Keep it out of the garage so I can do useful things in the garage. All the planting stuff. Oof. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of moving stuff around. Exactly. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, if you don't have the space, you gotta make do. But before I <clears throat> before I had the shed built, I just strapped the kayaks up to that far wall. And they're out of the way. Oh yeah, that makes it easier. For sure. <clears throat> yeah, I utilized my wall space pretty well before I had everything in here. Like I just ceiling hooks and and uh, eyelets with straps, as much on the ceiling as I could get. Oh shit. Oh wow. Jeez. Do so you have to pay for extra shop space? That's interesting. Hopefully I'll still be here. <laughs> and you're back. Oh, rent is cheap. That's good. See where I lived before the rent was as cheap as a mortgage. So actually a mortgage was cheaper than the rent. So it just made sense. <laughs> but yeah, not everyone has that option. Oh boy. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. And then it's probably hard to find a house too when you want to finally make that leap. You know, we had a heck of a time trying to get a house. 
heck of a time. You put in an offer and if you didn't go like ten to twenty thousand dollars above uh, the asking price, you definitely weren't gonna get it. And then we only got this house because we wrote a letter and they chose us from the letter that we wrote. This was kind of crazy. And yet, they blame millennials for ruining what the housing industry? We can't even get a house. Keep your mind open, I guess. When it comes to that stuff. I don't know. Someone told me once you should never be more than one call away from a job. I think the same is true for like housing. You always have a place you can go if something happens. You always got to keep your options open. Understand that it's so hard to make money with woodworking. Woodworking, it's hard to make money. Any creative venture, you're gonna have difficulties. But if you're gonna do it, you gotta put it all, you gotta put everything in it. I don't know how many times a day I think about quitting my job. Quitting my job and just doing something creative, either woodworking or I don't know. I think about it all the time though. When I'm sitting at my desk for 12 hours a day working thinking, hey, I could be standing at my table, my workbench, making things, and actually maybe enjoying my work. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Hopefully it all works out for you. I still would not have the guts to do it. If I had something that was a legitimate product 
that I could sell, that I would know would sell, I'd ha have a lot easier time doing that. But I don't even have half the tools I need, so yeah, there's no chance for me. But I'm glad you're doing it. Glad. Glad you're doing it. And I can watch your stream from my carries. So. quite a few pencil marks on here that aren't really sanding away. engineering like engineering new products what do you mean by that? engineering that sounds awesome ah. familiar but it's not uh I'm not recalling that person at the moment Menards. Uh. <clears throat> oh, okay. British YouTube. I'll have to check them off. I'm gonna make a note here. In a minute. Yeah, this cushion costs like ten bucks. I got it at, I believe I got it at Menards. But they only sell them every once in a while. not come with a bucket. It's just the top. It's a regular five gallon pail. Um, I'm certain you can get them on Amazon. <clears throat> um, but it's kind of like meant for hunting. Sit on a bucket. So I usually have it. Uh, I usually use my hunting stuff. I use this to store my hunting stuff. And it's like an extra emergency chair in case I need it. It's nice though because when you're hunting it's all plastic and it doesn't squeak or anything when you when you rotate on it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But yeah, I use it while I'm sitting here. Pretty good. British YouTuber who does engineering like tax. I think that's cool. I, uh, I definitely like the engineering ability or I don't know like I think of everything I do in this garage is engineering like uh, attaching my speakers to the ceiling That was kind of an engineering project. 
but all I did was screw a two by four to the ceiling, screw in a couple of uh, eyelets on either side of the two by four, and we used a ratchet strap to pull up the speaker and ratchet it to the ceiling. Very, very simple option, but it works so well. And then if I just want, if I want to move it, it's easy to just un to unratchet the straps, unscrew the board from the ceiling and put it wherever the heck else I want it. Not like anything uh, super special. Definitely like making talent solutions to shop problems. <laughs> That's exactly how I view it too. Not spending more money. It's the same with like this workbench. Like I wanted a vice and I can't afford to get a, a, a vice that's like a front vice. So I found a so I made this Moxon vise. It's just like the simplest. This has got to be the cheapest vise you can possibly make. And it's even more functional sometimes than a front vise. Like, this like moves from side to side. You can clamp uneven objects. Like this, uh, I can clamp the side of this uh, coffee filter holder and it's, it clamps it perfectly straight because it's at an angle. This is, uh, I believe it's from Taylor's Toolworks. So it's $60 for all the hardware. It comes with the washers, the nuts, the screws, and the handles. <clears throat> it's gotta be the cheapest option. You can, you can do, something like this from the hardware store and just buy the screws and the nuts and then make some wood handles but um well a this stuff is better quality <clears throat> yeah and then like i constantly am screwing it boards to the side the, the top of this workbench because it's this workbench is like six two by fours and one sheet of plywood like the simplest easiest cheapest option and it's a huge solid workbench it's two pieces of two by or two pieces of plywood glued together and screwed and that's the top, so it's really thick, durable. And then I just glue in this, this, this acts like a, what do you call that? One of those things. Bench stop or whatever it is. A baby crib. That's kind of cool. Um, probably neither. I'll probably put a clear finish on it. Probably polyacrylic or polyurethane. Let's see which one I have in the room. The polyacrylic is super clear, so it would just basically look like this, but a little bit wet. And then the polyurethane 
a little bit darker, but more durable. Actually, I don't even know if that's true. I think polyurethane's more durable than polyacrylic. But... Hey, Cheryl. Welcome back. What's going on today? good for a mock-up. Ice storm, oh my god. Oh. So my girlfriend wanted like something she could put in here to like divide or like hold the filters to the front. Um, so I got like a stack of filters here and then, like when you run low they just kind of flop over. <laughs> yeah no it was really cool because I did I was able to draw this on SketchUp and now I can actually make it so yeah that's very satisfying. There's this one. But, so I'm gonna find a piece of pine or some kind. I think I have a piece of thin plywood that I can turn into a divider. In the same shape as a filter act as a weight. I just gotta oh here. Yep, yep, I totally can do that. Just one moment here, pull it up. All right, I had it up yesterday, so it shouldn't take too much to grab it. So yeah, I'm not like a, I am not a professional. And I did change this a little bit. Um, Original design, I made it a little bit uh, like the top is a little bit wider, but we kind of changed it as we uh, made this version a little bit. And then in the SketchUp version, um, the top is is like wider, and the legs get skinnier. Um, but I didn't want to worry. I didn't want to mess around with it this time. No, I just, uh, that's why this one doesn't match exactly. Let's see if I can put it up. See how the drawing is a little bit wider on the top. Um, what was I gonna say? No, I just, uh, so I just kind of measured 
and drew it out, and made a template. And then, so now I, I just trace this template onto a piece of wood, and then I cut it out. I could definitely do it with a router, but I just cut it on the bandsaw and then sand it up to the line. But now I have this template so I can remake, I can make a lot of these with these similar shapes. So, yeah, I think uh, if I was gonna batch a lot of these out, a router might be a better choice for uniformity. And it would, if you're batching a lot of them, it would probably make it more um, it would be less time for you, I believe. For... But yeah, that's where we're at. Oh, <laughs> can't seem to hit the right button. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff on SketchUp um, because I just have a lot of time to mess around with it on the computer. Okay, yeah. I also use a lot of palette wood. Um, just because it's cheap, not because it's any superior product or anything, but um, yeah, I got a bunch of it that I've been planing. It's hard to see, but this the stack right here is all just pallet wood that I've been planing to make it square, because that was a really bad pallet. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we built our shed last summer and we had a whole bunch of material that was delivered to our house. So we had, I don't know, we had probably four pallets. So I broke most of them up and saved the good boards. And actually this, uh, this dovetail that I'm making we're making this little practice box. This is one of the pieces of pallet wood. One of them was oak. So we got lucky and got a piece of hardwood on our pallet. And so we're going to build a cheap little uh, box to practice our dovetails. So I'm going to finish with this. We're going to work on our box a little bit. Bada bing, bada bing. Or so they say. All right, I had a template somewhere. There we are. The filters that I've messed up. Project. You have hand planes, right? For this one, I hand plane this. Oh, so you're gonna use your router as kind of a jointer? I've seen setups like that. Probably go through quite a few router bits, though. Whatever. Get cheap router bits. I've done a similar thing in the past. You 
Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Didn't you get uh didn't you get a uh, one of those uh Stanley ones? Oh, you had like a vintage Stanley. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna throw this in the band so quick. Maybe I should show off my hand to you. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, if you're really interested in hand pointing, you get a vintage Stanley. Make it look really nice. And you're saving a lot of money. But it does take quite a while to hand plane pallet wood. You're almost better just sanding it. You're almost better with pallet wood to save blades and sharpening time. You just do one of these guys. I got this for 10 bucks at a, not really an estate sale, but I got it from a guy who's trying to get rid of all his tools. This would almost be better than pallet wood. You run into a nail on your planer, jointer, hand plane, your router hits a nail, you just ruin the bit. You run into it on this thing, it just grinds it down. <clears throat> Alec, what is notoriously <laughs> shitty? Um, what was I doing? Oh, yes. Hard to get snowed on.
I want to get more cameras. But I only have like three USBs to hook into. cell phone yeah I mean one camera is all you really just using my cell phone connected wirelessly to my gaming computer inside. And I couldn't talk, I had no mic. So I was building my shed on stream just with a camera and I was chatting on my phone in text chat. <laughs> and then I slowly figured out how to do more stuff. <laughs> and now I'm all fancy and got like these mood transitions. Yeah, that's sexy. So sexy. <laughs> I am total schmance. <laughs> you should use the paint stick as, for a project instead of it as a paint stick. <laughs> like rip it down into smaller pieces and then use those pieces to construct like a tower or something. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got all my paint sticks or some leftover scraps sticking out of that bin right there. This is all, these are all my paint sticks. I got too many. Oh, yeah, that's totally true. I wonder where, I have a current one. Tons of layers of stuff on it. I don't know where it went though. That's why I have so many paint sticks. I never know where I put them. even put like a little piece of wood on the, the bottom tip so it kind of holds it as a weight. Or maybe I'll put a piece of wood down there, and drill a hole, and maybe I 
I have some fishing weights I can put in there. I can actually give it some, some actual weight. It's, not, it's good. I, uh, so here we go. I'll show you a little bit. So we we uh, sanded the corners so they're all nice and smooth. flushed up the front so we can we can't even feel where the joint is in there. It's so smooth. Yeah. And then this is all used blew up using glued up wood so it's pretty strong. So we get, oh thanks for the bets. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um god i got I, there's got to be a way to turn off the moats in my text-to-speech it just says all the words of the emote in my ears <laughs> um anyway what was i saying i don't know so this isn't too bad for like a mock-up practice round. We'll eventually get to a hard wood version. Um, yeah. Seems good. It says literally it just says over and over again, seems good one, seems good one, seems good one, seems good one. Seems good one, seems good one. It's 20 times! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I. Texas Hula in the past, I think he like puts it, uh, puts it, uh, doesn't he do it so everyone can hear it too? I wouldn't do that to you guys. <laughs> hey, you're doing your shelves right now? Pretty legit. Are you, uh, are you doing it like at this moment? I'm happy to help. Hell yeah. That's awesome. So Slim Jim got quoted like, what was it like 115 pounds? He's in the UK. 115 pounds, pounds to put up a shelf. Oh, cool. You got it. You got it. That's nuts. 115. That's like, what, 150 bucks? Maybe more? US dollars? I don't know. What the hell? Can't imagine charging that much to put up a show. Yeah, how is it? You can do it. No problem. Run into any 
problem yet. It never fails. I always run into some sort of a problem. No matter how simple the project. I was wiring some speakers. In my office the other day. Ran into a whole bunch of problems. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. There, we kind of made like a little wood filter. It even has the little tab sticking up just like this one does. So now when we have only one filter left, we have something in there. Kind of hold it up. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, weird. Amp shuts off when you turn it up too loud. So it has must must have some kind of over voltage protection or something. Whammy cat. <laughs> I think. How are you today? I had uh, an issue with my my uh, not my amplifier, my receiver. It would do over voltage protection, and it only did it because I had some wires crossed. The wires were crossed. Like I wired up a second line of speaker wires to like test something, and I left them on, and the wires were crossed, and not connected to anything. Like shut the receiver off all the time. <clears throat> Is that yours? Someone had to do it. Okay. Ah, that's awesome. Um, so, we made a, this is like a mock-up of our copy filter holder that we drew on SketchUp. So, oh no, my camera. <laughs> this is my crappy mount. Anyway, so yeah, we have our, this is for the Hario V60 Brewer, triple, triple pour, pour over, pour over. And then the filters just kind of fit in here. And we can move this up on the counter. That's what we're working on today. And then I also have, I'm uh, practicing my dovetails. I'm going to make a small little box to practice stuff with the dovetails. So hopefully we can learn something today. And this is actually one plank of pallet wood that I that we found a plank that was made of oak. And so we cleaned it, cleaned it up, and cut it into these planks for this box. Yeah, this one is not good. I'll put it that way. We already broke it, so we had to glue this piece back together. It split off, and so it doesn't fit perfectly because I planned to glue it. Now it's a little bit too small. So, it might look a little bit better on camera than it does as I'm seeing. And then you can see all the splitting I did on it. So that's where, where it broke, essentially. It split. There's all kinds of tear out right there. But this is probably the, I think I've only done like 
attempted dumb tales. This would be like the third time I've ever attempted dumb tales. So I've just never used quality wood. Yeah. Box joints and butt joints are a million times easier. So, and these are really, they don't add that much strength. They just kind of look pretty. They're somewhat difficult to make. So that's why, yeah, whatever. Kind of fun. <clears throat> but as far as I'm concerned, I'm good with this. We might apply some finish to it, but I'm gonna wait and do some test pieces. And then we got, uh, we just made the little uh, whatever this is to kind of hold it. So we get all our filters here. can start working on some dovetails. Dovetail and chill. <clears throat> but so there's about a million ways to do dovetails, and I have not watched a video in a long time. I think essentially I'm gonna try and copy this to another piece. We'll cut the tails into another piece. Start our dovetails. Um. I have the hydrate command in channel points. In case you're wondering. <sighs> but you'll never be able to afford it. <laughs> no hydrate on this channel. Actually, there is hard hydrate on this channel. <laughs> so I have this jeweler saw. <clears throat> this is how this assists us. Assists. This helps us cut the dub's tails better. Exercise is way better than hydrate. Oh man. <laughs> oh, you'll join me. All right. Hell yeah. All right, gotta get a good camera on this guy. Oh, 
that off? Is that off? <clears throat> How many more slots can we do? Better take this off to the side. No one wants to see my man nipples. I can do. Oh, and push. Okay. Mix it up. Shit. Okay. All right. 40 squats and 10 push ups. Well, oh, wait. We're up to 50? Is it 50? No, it's 40 plus 10 push ups. All right. We can do it. No problem. <clears throat> oh, I hit something back. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That was good. That was real good. Ah. Oh. Ah. Ooh, I get a shark now too. I dropped one on the floor. Okay. That's okay. It's just important that you do them. Hey, drive. Oh. There's a, whew, that's pretty good. 100 calories and six sharks. <laughs> Thanks, Slim Jim. <laughs> Thank you for the bets. Ah, it's good for you. It'll help strengthen them so they won't cramp as much, right? <laughs> You're welcome. Oh. All right, I'll catch my breath a little bit. Oh, then we'll try some dovetails. Probably should have put some uh, 
limitations on those uh maybe a cool down <laughs> but i didn't oh uh it looks tighter today so um yeah we'll have to shave it down a little bit for it to fit perfectly I probably should, but I want, I want to, uh, I want to do more workouts. I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind doing it a lot. I've actually been doing, um, what I call the lumpy space princess workout routine. I just made it up. <laughs> ah. All right, well, I probably do them. Workouts. My current workout routine has been to do 100 squats, 100 push ups, and 100 leg lifts per day. And I've pretty much done it every single day, but not all at once. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't even, I don't know, it's really not that much, man. When I think about it, because I used to do a lot more than that. When I was in my wrestling days. We used to measure push ups in time, not in a number push-ups yeah I used to be able to do 100 push-ups in a row pretty regularly those were the days but this is this is kind of why you don't want to use power for this kind of work. There's so many splits. <laughs> I do need more wrestling pictures. There are quite a bit of them somewhere. I think my mom owns them all or something. I got a pretty good one on this computer of me throwing a guy in high school. But when I got to college, I really just was not competitive. I wrestled in college, but I was, I, I don't really care about the competition aspect of it. I just wanna, I just wanted to go to practice and we do uh, live wrestling for like a long, long time. And then you're, it's just kind of like a match for however long you want it. You can put as much heart into it as you want. And it's not about winning or losing. It's just about doing it and having fun. That was my favorite thing about it. Anyway, I got to try and do some. That I really need to worry about it. All right, let's put some more tails 
out this one. <sighs> See, if I was doing this, I think the proper way would be to go put lines on the inside of this, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to mark. I'm definitely not doing this right. I know that. <clears throat> but, so we're kind of just experiencing this together in a in a way. <clears throat> the tails don't matter for accuracy that much. The tails, you cut, and then the pins just need to match the tails. So that is our main concern, that we, the tails were making the same in, in appearances only. They don't have to be the exact same. The pins just need to match the tails. So that's what we're worried about right now. <clears throat> So we're gonna make it fit into this piece. So I'm gonna take my marking gauge and put it on this piece that we're going to fit the pin or the tail into. Measure the width of that. And it can actually be like a smidge longer, but I'll just put it as exact as we can get it. And then we'll transfer that mark to this piece. Um, then what I've seen other people, other people teach this stuff to do. Thanks for the alert drive, I just saw that now. Um, take, and they mark over the line with a pencil, kind of give it more visibility. So if you get if you get some uh, pencil in the line and then erase it, it, makes that cut that you put in there visible. And it kind of worked. You can clearly still see the line. And most of the lead is inside of the line that it was cut. I've seen a lot of people that teach dovetails do this just so they can see it. Also have this gauge set to cut the tails at the same exact length. It's hard to see though.
<laughs> oh, hey, e gem, thanks for the lurk. Thanks for the bits. You don't have to give me bits. You shouldn't give me bits. I'm just going to use them to buy stupid shit. I've got I got raided by um, Laser Geek once, so that had I don't know I think he brought like forty people to the channel or something, and then I got raided by Mrs. Ruby once. I think she had like eighty people or something like that. But yeah, I, usually I think I'm averaging like. Three and seven. <clears throat> it's hard to say what's the most viewers I've had because when you get rated, it just goes way up. And I've been streaming for less than a year. I started streaming, I think, maybe in. Maybe in May, I think I started. When I started The Shed is when I started streaming. And I did like a couple of test streams beforehand. <clears throat> like my very first stream, I was in the garage assembling my miter stand, miter saw stand. Second stream was putting up my mailbox. Yeah, no, I told, yeah, it's nice to have you guys. I'm surprised anyone shows up to this and you guys keep coming back and I, don't know, I really don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put in some more tails. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat.
I'm gonna probably this one's not coming out as straight. So I'm probably gonna come back and take a chisel and then make them straight and make them straight to the lines that I drew. Oh yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> well, I'm glad it could help. <clears throat> I, I definitely listen to this Twitch in general when I'm working too. And it totally makes sense for workplace banter. Because just about everyone at work right now they don't like just stop by the office or stop by the, you know, normally when someone would just stop by your desk and say hi or bring up some work topic and now they don't, they don't talk to you unless they need you to do something. So I feel your pain on the workplace banter type thing. I used to sit right next to my boss's office. And it was nice just being able to like chat about stupid stuff. <laughs> exactly. Especially the older crowd, yeah. Heck, even the younger crowd doesn't even do it. I don't know, and I feel like I have so much work every day. It's sometimes like, like I don't want to chat. I just want to get my stuff done because I, I don't get it done. I'm passing it to the next person. <laughs> yeah, and it's easy to get distracted when you're working from home. Well, fortunately and unfortunately. Yesterday I was, after the stream, I was looking at my chisel and the chisel was like so dull. There was like bends in it. Waiting for someone to break something, shit. Yeah. My job's a little of everything. Wait, waiting for something weird to happen in the world that we have to take, you know, address. And we have a lot of proactive stuff too. A little bit of a mixed bag. more light. Does that help anything? Not sure. I just 
switch this camera up. Uh, yeah, you never know. I just want that vaccine to get out so I can start thinking about other things. <laughs> We're talking about the shelves. Be a little tricky sometimes. Just gotta keep at it. I'm cutting well because I don't want to go over it. So I'm really just taking it out so the chisel has less to. So the chisel has less to worry about the chisel will get right up onto the line and the saw just goes over the line so easily. about a million ways to do a dovetail. And I'm not exactly sure that I'm doing it the proper way, but it's a way that I know. took out, they made the chisel line that cut a little bit bigger and we can put and break out along the top, make that line bigger. We can chisel down a little more and then we're kind of prevent, we're giving room for the chisel to go in there without tearing out even though we still might tear it out. So yeah, the, the, by taking out that waste, it just gives us more room to move. Makes it a little bit easier to get a nice clean Eventually, we'll probably get far enough away for the line and not worry about tear out anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like you're pretty close to getting that done. I would definitely love to have a table in my list of projects. I 
I was, uh, it wasn't too long ago, I had my shed that I was working on that I kind of felt the same way. I was like, I need to get this done so I can start working on things that I actually want to work on. I just got kind of sick of the shed. Yeah, so yesterday when I was doing this, uh, the chisel was super dull. I was tearing a lot of this. <laughs> Hell yeah, it takes a long time to do anything. Um, you haven't done that yet? I can show you what I did. I can touch up uh, one of these. I'll show you what I did. I should probably touch these up anyway because they're going to get really just dull really fast. And I can already tell this one's dull. I think it's probably, these are the, these are the wood, wood river chisels. And they're not, they look nice, but they're not very good. Um, I don't know if I can show you this. Yeah, you can kind of see. There's already like bends. I No, they look nice. They're not good chisels. Um, as I'm pounding into oak, the tip is starting to bend. It's not good. Um, that just means it's bad steel. So I'll show you how I do this. I have another set of chisels, but I have not taken them. Yeah, well, if you're looking for an inexpensive pair that's recommended by some decent woodworkers, this is the set you want. These are the Narex chisels. And I haven't had a chance to go through and sharpen them to be, these are still the factory edges. I got these last Christmas. I haven't really had a chance to use them. These are the one, this is the basic set. This is probably what we want. I think these are $80 for this set. Made in the Czech Republic. Um, yeah, so these are probably accessible, maybe accessible to you if for $80. I don't, I guess I don't know what they are currently. This was $80 two years ago. And then these, these are the Wood River ones. Similar set. I think this was $60 on sale. Ooh, Amazon. Well, perfect. <laughs> That's where I got, I, well, actually, I don't know. These were a gift, but the, the Narex set was an Amazon. You can find them for, on Amazon for a good price. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird because the Wood River does have some good stuff as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I do not like these chisels. I think they look very pretty though. That's kind of a side point. And they're gonna be better than my original set of chisels, which is the Home Depot 
project source brand. These are my original chisels and I keep them sharp. Well, kind of, but I keep sharpening them because they're my beater chisels that I'm not afraid, not afraid to use for stupid stuff. But when I'm touching up a chisel, which this is almost more than a touch up, I almost need to bring this back to ground zero. I put them on, okay, I probably didn't explain what this was, but these are my DMT stones. I think this is like $100 as well. I think I got them on sale for less than that. But And then I wrote down the grits. So the blue is a coarse grit, the red is a fine grit, and the green is extra fine. I just throw some water on them. If I can see that they're really dirty, I'll put them, I'll dip them in the water and kind of just clean off the top, all the grit, the grit, all the shavings. Ooh, I must go away. But then I'll take my stone on the course, make sure it's flat. We want to make sure this face is flat against the stone and we can just feel that. By rocking back and forth, we can feel what is flat against the stone. And then we just rub it, keeping the stone, the chisel flat. And it's kind of tedious to keep it flat. That's why a lot of people use jigs. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with using the jigs. I always push, I always push with all my sharpening. Um, there's a big long book um, written by Ron Hawk that's all about this sharpening stuff. And I think his end conclusion was there's really not any push or pull. It's not wrong either way, but he likes to push. I think that was the end conclusion that it doesn't really matter. And I always grind like on my grinding stones this way. <laughs> Yeah, but it also it has conclusions on certain things, but uh, pull or push, pull or push was not one of them. <laughs> hey, Wayland, what up? How are you? Welcome back. What are you up to today? Oh. <laughs> what were you sharpening? Are you using a whetstone? Sounds like a job for a, a belt sander. I have a special jig for my belt sander to sharpen knives with. <clears throat> be happy to show you it if you want to see it. All right, so you can see maybe how much we've taken off. You can still see there's a couple of shiny spots. And then there's a, some shiny spots up on the tip. So we'll just keep going at this until we see very few or, or no shiny spots. So this kind of takes a while. Oh, that's way more than it used to be. Holy crap. Well, that's the 12 piece. This is only like a five piece. That's a different set. This is a six. Okay, yeah. I have, I wonder if I still have those somewhere. 
Oh yeah, look at all these belts. When I'm sharpening my knives, there's an 800 grit. I think I got a 2000 in here somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, and you probably are doing those butcher knives too, right? The, the smaller knives that you want to keep them as sharp as possible because once you hit a bone, that almost becomes useless. <laughs> Way Lamb does it all. <laughs> yeah, the belt sander is saves so much time. Oh, eight inches. Hell yeah. Hope you have a snow blower. <laughs> yeah. Well, gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Not on Amazon. Good things, Wayland. Read that last comment out of context at Wayland. <laughs> hey, dude. Thanks for subscribing. You didn't need to do that. Arizona got eight inches. Make sure you follow Ingrediology. He's a good dude. Makes good food sometimes. <laughs> like spam a little too much, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I guess all the time. Spam is a great addition. I do, I did enjoy the spam, but I gotta say, the next day, after I had cooked the spam and I got in the shower, for some reason I could smell spam again, like coming off of me as I like, it was washing off of myself. It was the weirdest thing. Like spam must have some thing in it that carries the smell. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, spam has is strong. But I used it last night. We made cabbage steaks. And I put the spam on top of my scabbage taste cabbage steak. And then I put an egg on top of it. Spam boy man. Okay. A spam boy? <laughs> well, okay, we'll write it down. Spam boy? I add whatever commands you want. All right, it's on the list. Toast it and then dice it. Dice it and then toast it. Put it on your poke. So good, dude. That poke was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I gotta make sure Duck's song isn't. I don't wanna get the. 
DCMA before it, but 100%. Ooh. Yeah, it definitely went up. It used to be $85, that that chisel set. So maybe check out, you might be able to find it at, you might be able to find them on like a woodworking website, possibly Wood River or Veritas. Okay, so it's just Amazon. I think it used to be cheaper on Amazon, but yeah. What do you do? To be honest, the person who gifted me this chisel set might have paid the price gouging prices because they don't know where else to buy things. But I don't know. I should show you my knife sharpening jig since we're sharpening here. When I'm sharpening my knives, box is nice. I would definitely spend more money on the box, that's for sure. I'll show you what I do when I sharpen my knives. The only issue with this is that it takes off a lot of material at once. Even when you're using the really fine grits, it takes off quite a bit of material. So I only do this if the, if the uh, knife is very dull. But I take off my, <clears throat> we take off, little whatever this is called the table it usually isn't that hard so it's easier. All right, so we take off our table here. And then we have this jig. It has the angles that you want to use stamped into it so you can adjust whatever angle you want. And then it just fits over the back. You should, can you see that? It fits over the back of this rest. I'm gonna have to take off the belt to get it. There we go. See, it just fits over the back of the rest. <clears throat> and then the belt actually goes behind it right here. So it makes a new rest and then it puts a, makes it so you can adjust the angle in front of it. Then you take your knife. I got a knife around here I can practice on. Or something. Well, whatever. If you wanna, you would put the thing, the knife on there like this. This is a chisel, which I'm not gonna put a chisel on it. But uh, yeah, you just run your knife along it. And it takes off a lot of material. So if your knife is really dull, it takes like 10 seconds to sharpen the knife. So, yeah, it's one way to do it.
For sure, yeah. Um, I just bought an ax last summer, 100%. And for my chisels, I use my my uh, low speed grinding stone, low speed grinding wheel. <clears throat> this guy right here, and then I have the Veritas, whatever you call it, jig in front of it. That keeps everything straight for plain blades and for chisels. I did buy the Home Depot special axe, <laughs> the Husky brand. I did, I did. <clears throat> but a, I'm cheap. B, it's not that bad of an ax. And C, I only had like three things to chop in half, so it's hard to spend any money on that stuff. That, uh, this low speed grinder was also a sale item. It was like, 110 bucks for the low speed grinder. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I do intend to buy a really nice hand axe so I can do more um, woodworking with a nicer axe. I could see myself using a small axe much more than a giant splitter axe yes i've been looking at them i've been trying to find one but i'm like doing research on it because i don't want to get something that's gonna i don't want to get something that's not going to be good so i've just been doing research on the axe heads and kind of feeling out what i want to do Definitely gonna get a nicer one for uh, for woodworking, but I would never use an ax, a giant ax, for woodworking. Bucket Billy Ray. Let me write that down so I actually do it. Bucket, bucket, not bucket. Yeah. All right, I got it written down. Now I won't forget. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. There's some people that treat axe chopping like a sport. getting close it's so disheartening to buy a full set of chisels from a woodworking store and to have them be shitty that sucks
I can, I can only imagine someone going into a woodworking store who's a beginner buying a set of chisels and thinking they're awesome. And then the frustration of trying to do woodworking with something that doesn't work properly. When I first bought these chisels, the part, the face part is so rounded. I put these on the shelf because I had spent hours trying to get the rounding off of the face. And I still hadn't gotten a flat face. So pissed. And these became useless until I got the low speed grinder and I could take that rounding out. And now I'm using them and we're trying to cut dovetails and because the steel is so shitty, it just bends over and breaks and becomes dull after one half on a dovetail. But we definitely know how to sharpen chisels now. Fix that. What? <laughs> Keep them up. Yeah, but hasn't that already been done? Like when they when they made this. Didn't they already essentially do that? Like if you heat it up anymore, isn't it just gonna become brittle? I, I don't know. That's something I'm gonna look into. If I can make it a little bit better. You know I'm going to. Yeah, I guess I just thought it was the quality of the steel, not the tempering, but you're right, it could be the tempering. Like this, it doesn't even, I don't even think they label the type of steel anywhere. And I'm pretty sure on these Narx ones, I, mean, I guess it's not on here. These are definitely higher quality chisels though. So I think the next time I stream, I might go through the, the process of grinding, and sharpening these chisels. It takes a while, but. So the ones I do not like, these are the Wood River brands you get from Woodcraft. These are the bad ones. And you can just tell they're bad by the way that they have been originally ground. It's so uneven. Like the, the facets on the top are just uneven and you can still see. They're just bad. And when I first got this, the face was the face was rounded over and the back even had a round in it. It wasn't flat. Really bad. But the good ones, this is a Narex chisel from the Czech Republic. You can tell the face has been ground flat, or the, the back has been ground flat. 
the facets on the top are even and the face of the chisel is clearly not rounded. It's completely flat. So all I really have to do to sharpen these is to put them either on my jig or on the stone because they're already flat. Whereas the Wood River ones were not at all. They were rounded. Um, plus these were recommended by the Wood Whisperer. I talk about him a lot because he's been a, kind of an inspiration to me. But uh, he said this is a really probably the best beginner set you can get. <clears throat> and I think these were gifted to me and I think they bought, I'm not sure if they sell Imperial, but these are metric. Don't think it matters that much. These are like measured in millimeters. But there are also a ton of different brands out there. There's a lot of good ones. Just gotta pay the, pay the price. Uh, I gotta run to the bathroom real quick. I'm gonna leave you with a mowing scene. And I will be right back as soon as possible. One moment. All right. Wanna watch it finish, leave it. It's not that interesting. Probably gonna have to take another break pretty soon and get some more tea. I'm gonna finish sharpening this chisel. <laughs> Thank you. Also, welcome back yourself. Thanks for lurking. So, yeah, I've been talking about how I hate the Wood River chisels. I have heard good things about their hand planes. Yeah. 
Sounds right. I can cut half a dovetail before they start rounding over. To be honest, I'd rather almost use my Home Depot chisels than these. Still not even. It's possible that my diamond tip is pretty good. My diamond sharpener is pretty good. Really? There's no way this is that hard. Isn't that hard? I don't know. It's got to be fake. I'm pretty sure these are just made in a, a place where they are not doing proper quality control. There's no way this is as hard as my pocket knife. Not a chance. Take them back, but these are three years old. <laughs> Need a better pocket knife. I got a couple of pretty decent bench maids. It's another hobby you can get lost in. Yeah, I got a couple bench maids, a couple spider kills. I wouldn't give my Leatherman up for the world. Um, there's one, uh, is it Solingen? Um, let's see what I got. Um, Kershaw. Ooh. Yeah, the bench maids are the best as far as I'm concerned. At least as far as the main brands. You see this chisel? Awesome. I'd like to get it. The only like main brand I think I don't have is a ZT. I got the it's like Kentucky CRT CRKT. There it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not cheap. I just bought last year the, the bench made, they call it the sheep's foot. That's gray and blue. I love that knife so much. All right, this chisel is just about done. But I'm starting to have a, a little emergency situation here. I'm gonna have to run into the other room for a little bit. Gotta run or I'm gonna have some messy pants. I'll be right back. Now you can finish watching the lawn mowing. Sorry, I'll be right back. It's a different situation here.
Oh god, sorry guys. I've had some like stomach issues that I've been dealing with for a long time, so... Uh, looks like this has gone through a cycle. So you got to watch me mow my own hands. <laughs> Eat some more spam. Mm -hmm. If I wouldn't have had the caffeine, I'd probably be okay. Put it that way. That uh, is not embarrassing at all. I don't mind talking about it. So, I think when I sharpened these the last time, I maybe ran it a little on the... It didn't go perfectly even. But it's mostly covered. You can see that little bit of shiny left. I don't really want to work it out all the way, so I think we'll just keep going. It's pretty close though. Maybe I'll work it a little more. Everyone's a little, it's not the spam. I don't know, maybe it's the spam. It's usually coffee that gets me. Coffee will destroy my stomach and my everything. Coffee messes me up. <laughs> yeah, there's just one little piece left on the edge. And we probably don't. We're going to be sharpening it again soon, so I'm just going to move on to the higher grits. Move to red. We're in the red, guys. Once we sharpened it at the lower grit, you don't have to do as much on the higher grit. All the work is done on the lower grit. So when we go up a grit, we just look, make sure that it's even all the way across. This will probably be impossible to see, but the shininess is changing. You can see how, I think you can see on camera there how it's a little bit, you can see some shiny, shinier spots than others. So we'll keep going on the next grit until it's the same amount across the entire face. But the lower grits go a lot faster once you've done all the work on the, the higher grit. What did I just say? That's probably the opposite of what I just said. So, with all this hand planing I've done, and all the flattening I've done with my hand plane and the jointer, I think my next tool is going to be a, a planer. So that I can bring boards to the same thickness. I think that's, I think I need to expedite that purchase. Because if I were to have taken this board and run it through a planer, I would have had a perfectly even thickness board and I would have improved the quality of this dovetail significantly. I think that's got to be the next tool. I know a guy that has an old Delta planer that he wants to sell me. And he has a dust collector that he wants to sell me for a good price.
but he currently is in Arizona and won't return to Minnesota until the winter is over. Yep, 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 yep. No, I don't totally hate rolling all this stuff. This property in Minnesota is freaking sweet. It's the person's land that I hunt on he has like a he has two garages and a nice like big house and like a tucked away little valley it's amazing oh yeah deer hunt I used to do some bird hunting too but I don't really do that anymore did not get to go deer hunting this year. So that was a big bummer. So I don't have any more than a left, unfortunately. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks even across the face. I mean, that's the only reason I hunt. I really enjoy venison. It's good for you. Tastes good. It's like, I don't know, pretty sustainable, I guess. Now, I'm just going to run it across the strap. So I mounted this piece of leather onto a block of wood. We just run our aluminum oxide across it a few times. Four-year-olds. <laughs> oh boy. I can see on my strop it's starting to turn dark. It's all the material that we're removing and polishing. We're not pushing hard on this, but trying to keep it even. It just gives it a nice polished look.
So now, oh, that was deep paper. Should just cut it. Nice and easy. So that one's good. It'll be dead again in just a little bit. Sheet. All right. the screw. Now we're going to be super sharp. It's going to be easy to pair away the, the wood instead of trying to scrape it. Just kind of getting this close to the lines that I drew. Definitely a lot better. Alright, so our whale tails are pretty much done. Hopefully that makes sense. We clamped it in our vise, we put the tails uh, above it so that they're as even as possible. We'll transfer some lines. Usually you would want to do this if you can with a knife. Um, but I don't think it matters that much because 
our end goal is to sneak up. We want to sneak up on them. So as soon as we have them transfer, I'm gonna darken this for you a little bit. As soon as it's transferred on there, we're gonna go across and transfer. We have this set from our last set, from our last uh, from the tails, and we transfer that. Other board. Yeah. And then we're just severing some of the fibers. And uh, I draw on the line on top. Cut so we can see it a little better. careful of this piece because we already broke it once and there's still another split in it so break again oh uh, yeah farting and farters Yeah, there's 28 different parts. Feel free to use them all. <laughs> Tell ya, we are fart smellers. <laughs> of course that's what you know. Transferring the lines for the pins, so we're, we're, we're going to cut them as close as possible. But we don't want to go over the lines. people subscribe to this crap. <laughs> Stop you on Twitch. Well, that's what Twitch is for. Not really. Oh, 
At least now you know where I where I am. Would I? Of course I would. <laughs> they do have built-in stuff. <laughs> yeah, those Japanese saws are pretty cool. I think I don't know. I bought this Veritas saw. Uh, dovetail saw a while back. So this is the most expensive saw I own. That's pretty good. So I, I'm fine with this one for now. I think maybe someday I'll get the Ryoba saw. Or... Oh God, no! I think are you, are you talking about this saw? This saw I would sharpen. This saw, no problem. I have a saw set. I have the files. I would saw. I would sharpen this, no problem. A Ryoba saw, you have to like send in to a specialty store to get sharpened because they're like a razor. <coughs> they're kind of like the, what do they call them? The aggressive blades. Like the, the hardware store has these. These blades are like a razor tooth, I think they call them. These you can't sharpen on your own. These you have to, they're so cheap, you just buy new ones. Um, and I think the Ryoba saws are made in a similar manner. So for you to have them sharpened, you have to like send them in to a specialized store. Sir, it's impossible for me to sharpen them. But that's why I buy, I would love to get some vintage hand saws, some stuff that's like really old and then just keep sharpening them yourself because you can sharpen them yourself forever. They never, ever wear out really because you have to just resharpen them. So I'd like to do that. Ooh, I had a wipe after that one. Hey, Ginger. How are ya? Thanks for the host. Thank you. come in here and he subscribed so that's cool and then uh we have danger in here now too so we're happy give danger a shout out I gotta change that command Be my likes. danger streams farming simulator Cool as F. Yeah. 
You're welcome. Yesterday and today were my days off, so I gotta work the next two days. Very really disappointing. And then I have a three day weekend, so this is my short week. The next week I work Monday, Tuesday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, it just alternates. So this week I only work Tuesday, or uh, Wednesday. This week I work Wednesday, Thursday. And next week I work Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I do 12 hour shifts. We have to have 24 or 7 covers, so we're kind of weird shifts. 24 7 coverage with only four people. So, so when anyone else wants vacation, we have to work it. I already do a little now. Yeah, when someone has to vacation, we have to work it. So it's almost like we get no vacation at all. This oak, I don't know. Just kind of. Here's a little app. It's not very good quality. Probably why it was used for a pallet. 
That one sounded fake. already terrible. Oh, until we 11. Shit. Ooh, you're building a house? Oh man. <laughs> yeah. I think all of the stuff in the US is probably going to change. Too. You got a plan for your house already? Insurrection Act. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Said wood was a little bit cheaper. This, this chisel is like already dull. It looks like a sawtooth. It looks like it's completely terrible. I bet these Narex chisels would be bad and I haven't even cleaned the oil off them yet. Narex chisels would be better and I haven't cleaned up the oil from them. did. How did it go? It's 
to look good. That's straight. <laughs> yeah, combating laziness is always the, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I was drilling the hole into the concrete, the brick. These unsharpened Narex chisels work about as same the same as a recently sharpened Wood River chisel. I'm gonna put cleats. I'm not looking forward to it. French cleats are like the easiest thing to do. Forge some chisels. Shit. So now, one of the next things I need to build is uh, uh, a woodworker's hammer instead of using this dead blow hammer that's on the project list. Oh, uh, well, it's just like drywall except it's harder. There's a masonry bit. It's not that hard. Oh, really bad tear out. I can't wait to learn how to be a woodworker. <laughs> Certainly glad this is a practice. Ugly. I'm gonna run it across. Stone again.
terrible. Terrible, absolutely terrible. We're just gonna try try and pair this back a little bit. Up right next to the pencil line. <laughs> it's good for you. It's good to get out of your comfort zone every once in a while. <laughs> wow, at least you did it. You saved a hundred pounds. Say a hundred quid. Is that what it was? Hundred quid. This, if this one doesn't fucking fit perfect, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be upset. Ah, oh, zaps, zaps this. for the follow. Hope you're having a good day. Alright, that looks fairly up there. Pretty good left and right. Okay. 
Tadi So yeah, we clamp that down. It should be very good. Place. And this is another reason we didn't use perfectly flat wood. So there's only so much we can do. Only logical that this one. We've skirted by too many times without having a mistake. We made a pretty good Z though. We got a thing. There's no use in continuing because we can't make a box. Like this. It's made a divider of some sort. It's a thing. Um, so what happens, Slim Jim, is that when you're making dovetails, they only have one way to fit in. And I should have made this go the other way so that it, didn't, it wouldn't turn into a Z. This other end would come this way and form a box. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, should have known how to do that, but that's why we practice. We need to practice lots when it comes to dovetails. Giveaway item? You want this? <laughs> but hey, we practiced dovetails today and then. I don't think I would have done this without you, Slim Jim. You asked me to make this, and I fucked it up just for you. <laughs> I did it really? Oh God. So I think, <laughs> oh God. Uh, thank you, Slim Jim. appreciate that. Um, 
I don't know how long has that been. Uh, how long has it been? It feels like it's forever. been going for almost four hours. Surely it is an opportunity. For sure. <laughs> um I have been streaming for almost four hours. Oh, seems good one 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 no we should put this is this is the holder for slim gems <laughs> put slim gems sub stick on there oh you don't have to do that hey thank you the Bit King. Makes me want to take off my earbuds, that's for sure. So we have Slim Jim's sub stick up there on top of Slim Jim's dovetail project. We fucked that up just for you. All the sharks. We'll give Make Mistakes some ru a run for his money. Mm. God, those sharks are too good. Anyway, I think next time I'll probably come in and sharpen those chisels. So we'll actually have some good chisels. And. I don't know what we're gonna do with these Wood River ones. God, they're so crappy. They're really bad. Um, I don't know. I'll probably just set them aside for a while. Thank you. You. <clears throat> Thank you for all the bits in the sub. They will be banished, my chisels. Um, I won't be back until at least Friday. It's possible I'll be back. I will be back sometime this weekend. I just don't know when it's going to work out. It's so hard to make a schedule with everything going on. Um, anyone uh, have an idea where to go? Oh, I'm just gonna spend a couple minutes cleaning up and then my grandma wants to watch me cook dinner, so. We're gonna, I'm gonna probably try and make gnocchi for my, 
ran the Yeah. You do a Skype session and she watches me. It's kind of a fun deal. <laughs> uh I don't know, Sasaki? What? Men are the ones that should be cooking. So women can go to work and make money while we can stay home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll retire right now. Oh. I don't know. Cooking is just another maker's thing for me. I love making things, especially dinner. I try and make some gnocchi and some kind of red sauce tonight. Gotta love the red sauce. Anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for the bits. Thanks for the subs. We got some new followers today. Taff. Oh, he's saving his points. Okay. Yep. Perfect, Taff. Oh, thanks, Kovacs. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoy Sasaki. He's a really great guy, too. So. Thanks, Slim Jim. All right. Hey, feel free to message me in the Discord. I post things that inspire me there sometimes, and sometimes I post some of the projects I make. So check it out if you would like to. Otherwise, have a good day. Nice to see you. Goodbye.